Maybe if I was a dessert, I'd be a cinnamon roll. I need a lot of rest. Hi, thanks for joining Friends Test Kitchen where we scour the internet and look through magazines and any place where we can find a great recipe where Kat and I can test it for you with our pretty good kitchen skills so you can decide if it's something you wanna make at home for yourself. Today we're in for a treat. We are making something sweet by Ree Drummond. We are making cinnamon rolls and I know that coming around the holiday times, people like to make this as a treat even for breakfast on Christmas day for some of you lucky families. And for the details of the recipe, just look at the link below in the description. And if this is your first time, or if you haven't subscribed yet, just hit the subscribe button and you would totally make our day. So now that the milk mixture has cooled down just a bit, we are going to sprinkle our packet of instant yeast. And it says to just let it sit on top. So Kat, I don't think we're supposed to mix it in. I think we just sprinkle and just leave it on for one minute. Okay, so this is a lot of flour, but it's actually not the entire amount that Reed Drummond has told us. So her recipe can make, I think it said like seven or eight pans of cinnamon buns and Gina and I were like what are we gonna do with all that so we cut it in half and so we'll probably have three pans which is still a lot and just give one away to a neighbor or to maybe you know a relative that stops by so don't call us out on it it's just half the recipe and we just exactly cut everything in half I love Reed Drummond's recipes because they're so easy and it's not scary, except she does a lot of these things where she says, or whatever you like, or sure, a lot more doesn't hurt, or a lot. And it's always like, no, I need to know how much. <laughs> because in the recipe it said, a lot of butter. And I'm like, what does that mean? And if you scroll down to all her pictures, <laughs> Um, as she gives you step by step, she actually, then she says, a stick of butter. And it was like, why wasn't that in the actual ingredient list? So, right, just say stick of butter. Yeah, so she's fun, but it's also like, I, it's too fun. I really need to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kat, so mine is a little bit lumpy and gooey. Yep, Like how mine does too. yours look? But it does pick up. Um, the stuff on the side of the bowl when I mix it. Okay, so I don't know when I'm supposed to stop, but I'm gonna stop early. And we are going to cover this up with a kitchen towel. And we're gonna let it sit for one hour and then we will be ready to add some of the other things to it. And then roll this out, put a lot of butter, like Reed Drummond said, and make this yummy. Okay guys, it has been one hour my dough looks the same. Does yours look different? No, mine's a little bigger. A oh, little bit. see? I'm getting nervous. Okay. I don't think mine looks maybe slightly. The thing is that she says about the dough, after you let it rest an hour, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more flour and some other things in. And then once you mix it, she says that you can stick it in the fridge overnight and that you should check on it and punch it to get some of the air out. So I'm thinking that maybe when we add the other ingredients, maybe it might puff up. So when she did it on her blog, she's like, let's just make it. We're not going to stick it in the fridge. So that's what Gina and I are doing because that's what let's she did. Let's just make it. How's it going on your end? My, my spatula is like bending. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, that's why you need one of these. <laughs> Power spatula. Yes. Big one. You were smart. I'm going to use my hands. Woo! So what we're going to do now is put a bunch of all-purpose flour on your counter. I'm going to use my countertop. I think it's enough room. 
I know, that's why she I had to... It looks like you're in a different position. I had to switch my spot so you get a different scenery for today. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is flatten it. And she says that what we wanna do is try to make a rectangle so that when we start rolling it out, we're gonna keep the shape, but we're gonna make it as thin as we can. So I'm going to pour a whole stick of melted butter on the top of this dough. And it's going to look like a lot, but I'm going to brush on um, the butter so that it's evenly distributed. You're going to pour the sugar on top of every piece of surface, and it's a whole cup of sugar. And she does remind us a, couple of a few times not to worry if it gets messy, and assures us that the messiness attributes to the tastiness. <laughs> but she did say that we have to, you know, not to be shy with the cinnamon because, you know, this is a cinnamon bun. Cinnamon bun. I like it. So as Gina is shaking, we are going to start folding the dough. And she says it's easiest to fold the dough towards you and to keep it as tight as you can. I feel like her recipes like flour, sugar, butter, more sugar, more sugar, more butter. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, well now I'm really curious as how this is going to come out. <laughs> as we wait for these to rise, we're going to let them sit for 20 minutes and they're going to poof up a little and then we're going to stick them in the oven for about 15-18 minutes at 375. And while that bakes, we're going to go ahead and prep our maple is it like a maple icing? Yeah. So for our icing, we are gonna start off with a whole bag of powdered sugar. <laughs> but Kat and I, for this reason, have the recipe. So we are only adding half a bag of powdered sugar. This is a lot of icing, but it doesn't look like it. But it is so yummy looking. Guys, look at this. Just a big pool of icing. Okay, I'm gonna get a plate and a fork, and Gina, let's do a taste test. Okay. Ready, set, go. Okay, so on to ratings. We're gonna talk about how easy this was to make. On a scale of one to five, one being super hard and five being super easy peasy. Give it a three. Ooh, a I was thinking about a three. <laughs> but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know how to rate it. I was thinking of three. It's just a lot of little steps and I feel like I kept having to, I probably read that recipe like six times as we were making it just because I was afraid I was gonna miss something. So now, scale of one to five for taste, one being awful, five being just so yummy. Ready, set, go. No surprise. What? A four? <laughs> a four. What do you have against butter and sugar? Butter <laughs> sugar. I just didn't think it was amazing. I thought it was good. Um, I think that maybe it's because I'm biased towards Cinnabon, because that is just so delicious. There wasn't like a lot of like flavor to it. It's sweet, it's doughy, but I feel like, I don't know. I wish you could try mine. I don't eat this at home, so for me, I don't eat it a lot. It's a treat. But I taste a lot of flavor. I taste the cinnamon and the butter, and I feel like the bread rose, and it's not too dry. It's like not, it's just cooked just right. But it's still good, and if someone gave this to me as a Christmas present so that I can like have cinnamon buns ready for breakfast on Christmas morning, I would be so thankful. Yeah, I would say if Christmas was edible, this would be Christmas. 
So thanks for joining us this week. We're so excited to try these new recipes with you guys. It's Christmas and this is a great Christmas treat or Christmas breakfast. So uh, Gina and I are excited to see you guys next week. So make sure you tune in. Bye.